I would like to keep things into context. I am not asking you to drop your faith. I support everyone's freedom. Your freedom to believe, their freedom to love who they want, my freedom to rant on the internet, your freedom to have six children, her freedom to abort, your freedom to completely disagree with me. The only condition being that our freedoms do not cause tangible harm to other human beings. Episode 2. My life in poetry and the death of God. Do we hear nothing as yet of the noise of the grave diggers who are burying God? Do we smell nothing as yet of the divine decomposition? God's to decompose. God is dead. Welcome to my life in poetry podcast. I'm your host C Church. Make sure to share the episode with those who enjoy this type of content in your life. On whatever podcast hosting platform you are on, please follow or subscribe. On this episode, we will look at one of my more recent poems, Bury Your God and give it some context. But first I grew up in a staunch Catholic home. Rosaries and Mary surrounded me the same way people surround a stranger who has just fainted. And just like the stranger, this all ended up really suffocating me. I understand the language I've used so far is dramatic, but I'm not being facetious. At 7, I had started going to catechism. Point of note, catechism was set for Saturday morning. So when I say I started going to catechism, what I really mean is I was told by my parents to go to catechism. It was boring, authoritarian, and more importantly, not a place for a 7-year-old. Near the church there was a quarry and a small river called Ndarugo. The water was chocolate. I would go to the quarry and find a way to get to the deepest points or sit at the river and drink the sound of water with water passing between my toes. This always made me really happy and relaxed. At times, it was better than staying at home. All this was done during catechism class, which was usually from 0900 hours to about noon. This fateful morning, I woke up, took my F5 exercise book, walked to church, passed the gate because of course I was never planning to go to church did my whole routine then I went home only to find that my catechist had come to visit I believe this was the first time in my life I wished I would trip and break my legs funny thing my father also wanted to break my legs I was really my father's son Struggling with poor mental health, I have opted to share my journey so far through poems that I have been writing since 2015. I had hoped to publish these poems in an anthology called Fear of Death. I will also be giving you the context of the poems, my honest role in my downward spiral, and thoughts about my future. If you like what I'm doing, share with other people who might benefit from listening to my Life in Poetry podcast. I am your host C Church. If you are interested in having a discussion, you could talk to me on Twitter using my handle at C Church. That is at S I C H A C H. I am looking forward to sharing my journey with you as we build a community that is more conscious towards mental health issues. Thank you so much for taking your time to listen to my Life in Poetry podcast. Share to other people who might enjoy these podcasts. After that incident, I went to catechism. Religiously, I might add, it was not that bad after I knew I did not have a choice. I sat next to some older girls who used to sell booze after catechism to some guys in a local club. I helped them finish their Eucharist stage. They used to copy answers for me if you haven't figured that out. I was wildly successful at this to the point some old lady dragged me out of the line as I was going to receive the body of Christ when I was 10 years old because I was too small. What I gathered from this whole story was to associate God with total control and punishment. So when I started reading the Bible, I saw how it treated the marginalized groups. He only favored one tribe at least for the most of the book, to be honest. These are just excuses not to like him. The truth is, I hated how my parents forced me to go to church on Sundays. I hated the lack of freedom and that is what translates to You have to bury your God. 
I saw him die right by the road. A car came and hit him right on the throat. They went into his pockets. Our blessings they stole. No one helped. He bled out on the cross. In my defense, I was really late. I was late. I needed to get home. My food was getting really, really cold. Thank God I got home on time. You have to bury your God. You see, I saw him being stoned to death at the shops. They said he loved men and that was unacceptable. That his book was really clear that men only love women and if not, you must end up with the stones. They said he was really old and never had a wife. I couldn't help in his case. I had first to protest to the government to save the women and children. Thank God I do not love men. You have to bury your God. I saw him shot by the police last night when he was begging in the streets. I was there. I remember them yelling, thief. I had to run. I was trying to steal your heart. I could not concern myself with helping him. I was too guilty. I was guilty of love. Thank God the police didn't shoot me. Do we hear nothing as yet of the noise of the gravediggers who are burying God? Do we smell nothing as yet of the divine decomposition? God's to decompose. God is dead. The poem Bury Your God is a reflection of how in Kenya, the obedience to God only reveals when it is an opportunity to show moral superiority or give justification for hate. God quickly devolves to conservatism that is really bigoted. I would have started with the LGBTQ thing, but... Let's just do the more palatable one. In this country, when someone tells you, Acha umama, side note, umama literally translates to acting like a woman, which contextually translates to stop acting like a pussy. Turns out it's also in your culture, huh? Back to my point. When someone tells you, Acha umama, it is derogatory. But I guess you have gathered that the opposite also means the opposite. I am not going to fix a stab wound by placing an elastoplast on it. So fixing language may not solve the underlying issue. We have to return to the manual, the software, religion. Since we replaced our African cultures with Christian morality where women are usually supporting caste because they are written as the supporting caste. On the LGBTQ issue, Again, it is the same problem, bad software. We act as if it is a highly contagious condition. It is the software that does not allow anything that is not familiar. It is Christianity that has no room for accommodating a person from another tribe. Remember, God only favors his tribe for most of the books in the Bible anyway, brutally killing others from time to time. So, if you want to really give humanity a chance, we all have to bury our gods for everyone to belong. This way, every single person can be accommodated and treated with the disrespect they actually deserve. Bury Your God is a twisted, broken call to loving each other regardless. We do not need to hide our hate behind God saying in the book of Samuel. I understand the irony. This is what Christ was preaching in the New Testament. But when it comes to social issues, we remember the Old Testament is part of the Bible. I cannot speak on Islam. I am not Muslim. Nor have I ever interacted with the Quran in a way that I can make any moral comment on Islam. I would like to keep things into context. I am not asking you to drop your faith. I support everyone's freedom. Your freedom to believe. Their freedom to love who they want, my freedom to rant on the internet, your freedom to have six children, her freedom to abort, your freedom to completely disagree with me. The only condition being that our freedoms do not cause tangible harm to other human beings. I am just asking us to allow our faiths to be inspected and revised over time. When I go to the hospital in this epoch, I am not expecting the doctor to cut my skin for a headache. Most of what was written in the Bible worked for the specific time period because it was designed for that time period. As for my relationship with God, let us just say it's complicated. The mental health question of the day. Does religion contribute to positive mental health over time? I would like to hear your thoughts on Twitter through my handle at si 
C-H-A-C-H at C-Church. If you wish to donate to this podcast, you could do so on Patreon at www.patreon.com slash mylifeinepoetry. We will be having patrons and donors only Zoom stream on discussing the episodes as a way of appreciating your input. Thank you and be kind.